we know what is the allowable stress now let's let's see what is the difference between the ASTM material and ASME material if you go to the manufacturing shop for pressure vessel you can see always I say in my previous uh, you know uh, slides that I explained in here SA516 grade 70 but you know there's also there's a material named A516 grade 70 A516 grade 70 SA516 grade 70 these are two different material they 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 are very similar and might be identical but they are separate ASME requires you to use the ASME material so actually A1516 developed by ASTM American Society of the Testing Material they, they put together this material but ASME took this material and said I'm going to use for pressure but then I might need to change something okay and, um, and adopted the A516 grade 70 and after that adopted that's renamed it and that's renamed is SA they put an S letter before A and it becomes SA516 grade 70 I put the first page from the ASME section to part A for the SA516 grade uh, sorry SA516 which is the different grades it's going to be inside uh, in, in, in the content on, on the screen and you can see uh, in the left hand is the ASME logo and in the right is the ASTM logo it means that they, they adopted from the ASTM and then you see in here that it says this is a 2017 edition what you can see in the screen is 2017 edition of the ASME section 2 part A and says identical with the STM specification A516 and dash 10 is means 2010 so very important point your 2017 edition of the ASME section 2 part A for SA516 grade 70 identical with A516 grade 70 edition 2010 please note 2017 edition of the ASTM is available but it's not identical with that it's identical with the previous editions and again it's that makes sense because the code committee needs some time when it generates new edition uh, to see what's the ASTM made the change and then also you know to see if they affect their design and other stuff and then adopt the new edition of the their previous edition so now 2017 of the ASME identical with the 2010 of the ASTM and if we go to the 2019 2019 right now is identical with the 2017 of that so ASME requires the ASME material to be used and it's 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 indicate as you can see in the screen is identical but this doesn't happen for every material for many material you can see in the first page it says identical except this 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 so ASTM if they have the same lettering just one extra S it doesn't mean they are the same things they are separate ASTM generated this this is the ASME that's adopted this and might be make some changes inside of the wording or also put some notes on the first page of that standard you have to be take care of that so ASME requires on the UG5 for plates that you use the ASME material so if you're going to the manufacturing shop and you can sing the material test report and you can see it says A516 grade 70 and pressure vessel needs to be manufactured inspected tested based of the ASME and it's the stamp holder pressure vessel manufacturer is going to be designed based of the ASME that's it that's an NCR that's a nonconformity yeah there's a, some material test report they, they have the dual certification it says A516 and slash SA516 that's that's good it's, it's also is ASTM and SA dual certification there is nothing wrong with the dual certification but if you can see only A516 
grade 70 that's not okay should be ASME material so now you know what's the difference between the ASTM and ASME material let me summarize it's not necessarily identical the codes require you use the ASME material because it's adopted because it's changed something might change something because it's going to be used for pressure reset but the ASTM is not designed this for pressure reset it's for general use okay now let's see what's the sum of the content of the SA516 grade 70 now forget about the ASTM and ASME now we want to focus on ASME I'm having some screenshot on the screen we want to go review and see what's the material we use for this pressure vessel which is a very common pressure vessel material we want to use what the SA516 grade 70 looks like okay the first thing uh, I'm gonna put in the screen you can see is 1.2 and it shows on SA516 grade uh, sorry SA516 there is a one two three four grades so SA516 it comes with the grade 55 60 65 and 70 which my material for this pressure vessel is SA 516 grade 70 and when it's a grade 70 the tensile strength should be between the 70 to the 90 thousand psi at the room temperature okay this is what indicated in the, one of the screenshots you can see in the screen for plate material and then maximum wall thickness as i as far as i remember this screenshot you can see is from the edition 2017 and it's much a change in 2019 so but it doesn't matter i don't want to you know go to 2019 or 17 or even even the past editions just want to show you how this material you know specifications provide the information so in 1.3 you can see it says the grade 55 can be up to the 12 inch for pressure vessel 60 can be up to 8 inch 65 8 inch and 70 up to 8 inch it means for this material as a 516 grade 70 i can have a pressure vessel up to 8 inch but i can't have a pressure vessel you know uh, a pressure vessel with the more than 8 inch heat treatment requirement plate material up to one inch one and a half inch and under can be as roll condition okay let's go to the factory and they roll the plate and they don't do any heat treatment but when the wall thickness is more than one and a half inch needs to be normalized okay so if you are in charge of the plate material inspection and you go in a factory with the plate and you see the thickness is two inch and you don't see on the material test report that it's normalized that's the issue because the code requires after the two inch sorry after the one and a half inch to be normalized okay in the item number 5.3 you can see if there's enough uh, notch toughness tests are required on a plate of a you know one and a half inch and below then there is a normalizing is a requirement we're going to discuss this later on some pressure vessel is going to be subjected to the impact testing not every pressure vessel some pressure vessel in the lower mdmt minimum design metal temperature with the combination of the wall thickness and material might subject to the uh, toughness notch toughness test or sharpie impact test in those cases even if the temp uh, if even if the you know wall thickness is less than you know one and a half inch then the plate should be normalized you know it's a kind of a an, an exception from the above uh, phrases okay so let me summarize one inch and a half over should be normalized one inch and below doesn't require normalizing exception when it requires the impact testing then regardless of the wall thickness you need to do normalizing okay another table that i made a screenshot for you is for chemical requirement as you can see i considered a plate material for three inch like a between the two inch and four inch you can see i circled the maximum carbon content can be 0 0.0 0 0.03 percent and for manganese you can see on heat analysis 
is something between 0.85 to the 1.2 inch and for product analysis is 0.79 to the 1.3 inch what is the difference between the heat analysis and product analysis heat is means is take the sample from the melt okay and product after it's become a plate they cut it and send it to the laboratory and they make a measurements on the chemical composition for phosphorus as a product and also in the melt uh, the heat analysis shouldn't be more than 0.035 percent and for silicon you can see there's a heat analysis and product analysis 0.15 to the 0.4 and there's a similar value for product analysis this is a, a, a chemical composition table so if you are charged of a pressure vessel inspection and you are in the manufacturer shop and they provide you a material test report for a plate that used on pressure vessel where you're going to check the chemical composition you're going to come to the table one of the SA516 and check to see how much is your carbon content and manganese and other element that indicated on the chemical composition table another table that I put the screenshot in here is a table two for SA516 grade 70 which is indicates the tensile should be 70 to the 90 uh, thousand psi yield the strength should be 38 thousand psi elongation in two inch should be 17 percent and elongation in eight inch sorry elongation in eight inch should be 17 percent and elongation in two inch should be 21 percent so the same things after you check the chemical composition in the material test report you come into the mechanical properties and, and the lab test result you have to check those test results with the these values and should be based off and consistent with the what you can see on table 2 for, for mechanical property requirement okay.